he underwent temporal lobe stimulation himself. Now, he's an agnostic, but he got himself hooked up. All the wires were attached to his head, and he had an NDE. Any direct connection with the afterlife seems unlikely. That's his conclusion. Science doesn't explain every detail in an NDE. For knowledge of events, the subject could not have been directly aware of, but it should make us hesitate to assign a supernatural explanation. What am I saying? I think science can explain quite a bit. But just because science can explain part of what people experience doesn't invalidate their experience. It doesn't mean that that there's nothing of God in it. It doesn't mean that it's impossible that they've gone beyond our world. For Christian writer and former White House policy analyst Dinesh D'Souza, whose own daughter had an NDE, the evidence is inconclusive. D'Souza admits that NDEs do not prove life after death because survival doesn't prove immortality. But it's clear that in some persons, consciousness lingers for a while after death. I mentioned D'Souza because I think his book on the afterlife is one of the best um, at uh, it's called Life After Death. It's one of the best books at uh, uh, marshalling the, the combined evidence for life after death. I circled back to check with two men whose opinions I really respect. First, uh, I approached Gary Habermas. He's an apologist, historian, and philosopher of religion for, for his take. He hesitated to confirm the Burpo story, but he kept his options open. Habermas said, I don't say we know exactly where NDEers may go, heaven or otherwise, but there's an incredible amount of evidence that something objective is happening. Habermas and his co-author, uh, J.P. Moreland, note, it makes sense that the identification of the figure will come from the patient's own background. For instance, no American claimed to have seen Shiva, Rama, or Krishna. So there are important reasons that certain factors of interpretation comment more on a person's beliefs, society, and culture than they do on the facts themselves. End quote. Neither author uh, rejects NDEs or the supernatural. I'm talking about Habermas and his co-author Moreland. They're both Bible believers, yet the approach they take to NDEs is marked by caution not to draw unwarranted conclusions. The other person whose opinion I respect, I wanted to consult, was David Brousseau who's an expert on early Christianity and a personal friend. And after he commented on the possibility of hallucination or fraud, Berceau concluded that such NDE experiences generally contradict the evidence of the early church. In short, in the New Testament in the first three centuries of Christianity, there was a strong consensus that all the dead went to Hades, not heaven. And I believe that's the doctrine that we should be holding to now. So if I sum up, I I will make four points in closing. NDEs are universal. They they happen to members of every culture and religion. Second, the experiences tend to reflect the faith background of those undergoing them. Third, many but not all can be rationalized in terms of physiology or psychology. And fourth, NDEs are suggestive of a spiritual world and an afterlife. They strongly imply the former, though they do not prove the latter. I hope this has been interesting to you. and May we all keep an open mind with the right amount of skepticism as we try to apply God's word to real life situations.